Hey everyone, I'm 32-Bit Bandit and welcome back to The Outer Worlds. Now, this is a very exciting episode as we are, in theory, about to launch our ship. Welcome back, Captain. All systems are now operating within acceptable parameters. Shall I take our ship into orbit? Let's get out of here. received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Good. I've been waiting to hear from him. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. I've been feeling a little lightheaded. Also, I can slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me. Help us find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Why do I need a nav key to land on a planet? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. So what's stopping me from just leaving Halcyon altogether? Without a skip drive? Good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. About this Gladys person, how do I know I can trust her? Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Fine. I'll go and have a word with Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. I'll put it to good use. Oh, hang on. Can you explain what it is? <laughs> Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. 
It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. You mentioned it has limitations. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. I'll put it to good use. Thanks. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Got it. Okay, let's go get ourselves a shroud. Holographic Shroud. The Holographic Shroud projects a disguise on you and your companions that gives you access to restricted areas, provides, um, provided you have uh, the correct ID cartridge for that area. Restricted areas are off limits to unauthorized personnel and otherwise result in being attacked on site. And we've leveled up. Okay, so we've reached 40 for here, so the coward duration um, from my novice ability has increased from 3 to 7 seconds. Okay, so hack. Unlock uh, access to restricted items in vending machines and uh, find plus 25% more bits in containers. Auntie Cleo knows friends make everything better, companion abilities. You can command your companion to use their special abilities on, um, on the enemy <laughs> excuse me, on the enemy you are targeting. Okay. Oh hang on. Oh. Perks. Right. So we've got two more perks, and we were gonna go for probably a bonus to weight and a bonus to health. Weight isn't as isn't hugely important as I just break everything down anyway, but I am really weak. Uh, high maintenance might be quite nice. Okay, so for now we're just going to go for toughness um, because, as you can tell, <laughs> that will definitely come in useful. Okay, so for Pavati's perk, increase the damage dealt by this companion when using ranged weapons, increases their armor rating, increases their melee damage, and increases your chance of looting mods when Pavati is in the party. Oh, I do quite like Mod Finder. Oh, uh... <laughs> Yeah, you know what? We're going to go for Mod Finder. Oh, we... Oh, hang on. Oh, we can't. She's got no perks. Okay, well, when she gets another perk, we're going to go for Mod Finder.
acquire Phineas's uh, science weapon and acquire the science weapon on the groundbreaker. Oh, hello. Obsidian skull. Forged under pressure, this decorative skull is carved from volcanic rock. Sometimes when faced with a choice, the only proper response is to annihilate the people asking you to make it. Oh yeah, so I've got his hat. How do I put, <laughs> how do I put his hat back on? Because I'm not going to wear it. Dialogue skills plus seven. Nice. Oh, he's quite dapper. Oh, well, I can't put it back. That's my fault for being too greedy and picking everything up. Right, let's go see if we can have a chat with Pavati before we go. Ooh. Are you Pavati? <laughs> A bit of luck. <laughs> okay. We'll go talk to Ada about Sam. Okay, and Pavati. Oh. Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy like, ain't it? So what do you think of the ship? That's in pretty good shape considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA-120, A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space, but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board-certified mechanic. Apparently, Ada's the one who actually flies the ship. Fly-by-wire's pretty normal. Or at least ways that's what I read in the trades. I've never been on a real ship before. Hello! I am not a board-certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. Ada, Pavati will be fixing you from now on. I expect your full cooperation. I am at your disposal, Ms. Parvati. You will find the technical schematics in the engineer's locker, though I'm afraid Captain Hawthorne has lost the owner's manual. I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Did you learn your trade from your father? Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. You worked beside your father your whole life? Except for my schooling years, I was always beside him. Or tied to him. He used to carry me about in a sling when I was real little. When I got older, he sent me to sorting tools and parts while he worked. Later, he taught me simple fixes like busted crate latches. 
Did your dad ever work on spaceships? Not on the regular. Once in a great long while, a Saltuna boat would break down on the pad. He'd always bring me along for those. Mostly, he did the same as me. Kept Bess, I mean, the, the cannery, running. Turned loaders, plumbing and electricity, some plastering. I never got the hand of that. Reed seemed to have it in for you. I'm not exactly a model employee. Not like you wanted. The kind that stays quiet and gets the right work done in the right order every day. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Why would people be unhappy about you getting a maintenance job? Because they were hoping their own kid would get the job and get sent back to Edgewater. When folk go away for schooling, they don't get back to where they begun. Not usually. You go straight to your first job, wherever the company's got an opening. You don't have any say in it at all? I reckon you could say, no thanks, I don't want a job. But then you don't got a job. But you actually are good at it, and you enjoy it. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. So after school, you moved straight back to Edgewater? Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big ol' hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower. And stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. Did you get much time with him after you got back from school? About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects, or listen to my fretting. Oh gosh, <laughs> look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. I think it's time you move along, Pavati. What? You want me to leave? Captain, you can't mean it. Oh, that's... no, that's... <laughs> that is not what I meant. <laughs> oh, that's a relief. Thanks, Captain, for letting me stick around, I mean. That is not <laughs> what I meant at all. Okay, so uh, that's where we're going to leave it for this episode, after that awkward end to that conversation there. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very shortly on the next episode. Let's take this scene